Hello, I'm Robin and welcome to Bookspin. Today we'll be looking at The Mountain in the Sea. This is a new release for 2022 by Ray Naylor. So the first thing that's worth mentioning, I think, is this book has an absolutely gorgeous cover. As you can see, uh, this is the US hardback edition, which I received as a gift recently. The UK version isn't out yet. It's due for a February 2023 release, I believe. So this is a near future philosophical sci-fi novel with some dystopian elements. It's described in the blurb several times as a thriller or a techno thriller, but I don't think this is very accurate as it's not a very fast paced story. It's more of a philosophical novel uh, that invites the reader to sit and think as the story unfolds rather than an action-packed affair that makes you want to hurry along to the next chapter. Um, but there is in fact a very interesting story here. This is a first contact story, but not where we make contact with aliens from another planet, but with a species in our own ocean. Octopuses. So there is a group of very highly intelligent octopuses that have emerged who seem to have developed their own language and culture. So let's talk a little bit more about the story. And to put this into context, this is set in a world where humans have been aggressively overfishing the world's oceans and really pushing our natural ecosystems to the limit. And this has led to evolutionary pressures on these particular octopuses to rapidly develop their own form of civilization. A global tech corporation has noticed these animals and taken interest. And this organization is called Dianima. And they step in and seal off the habitat where these creatures live in the Kondao Islands off the coast of Vietnam. The main character in this story is Dr. Ha Nguyen, a marine biologist who has spent her whole life studying cephalopod intelligence. And it is here that she carries out her studies into these animals and tries to find some understanding into their thought processes and their culture, and ultimately a means to communicate with them if possible. Alongside her on this island are a Dianima security agent and Evrim, who is the world's most advanced android, who has appeared to attain consciousness themselves. This is a very interesting character. So alongside this main plot, we have a couple of other narrative threads in different parts of the world. We have a section in Istanbul where we follow a renowned hacker hired by shadowy forces who want to hack into Evrim's AI and thus gain control over him. Uh, the other storyline follows Aiko, who is a young man who had started working for Dianima before being kidnapped and forced to work for a slave crew on an AI fishing vessel. Throughout the course of the novel, these three narrative strands gradually converge. So there are some big philosophical and moral themes that are explored throughout the story. The nature of consciousness and interspecies communication are recurrent themes. And alongside this, artificial intelligence is discussed a lot alongside human treatment of animals and ecological fragility. As a meditative and thought-provoking novel, I think this book does a superb job. It also has a pretty engaging story, and while the pacing is a little slow, it does ultimately pay off. Some of my favourite sections in the book were the scenes directly involving the octopuses, where we get to witness their 
mysterious and fascinating culture, invoking a sense of wonder at this truly alien life form. These creatures are profoundly enigmatic and inscrutable. I only wish we could get to spend some more time observing them. If you've ever watched the movie Arrival or read Story of Your Life, the short story which it's based on, uh, it's, there's a similar thing going on here. So I also enjoyed the slave ship storyline as I thought this was perhaps the most exciting aspect of the story with the most thriller-esque elements. I was genuinely curious how this side of the story was going to develop and what was going to happen to Eiko and his crewmates. The Istanbul hacker storyline, however, didn't grab my attention that much. I found the characters and the plot uh, in these chapters not very memorable or even necessarily essential to the story, and this prevents me from ranking this book even higher. Uh, overall though, this is worth recommending as an intelligently written and thought-provoking novel that grapples with deep questions about non-human intelligence, consciousness and communication. If you like first contact stories with alien intelligence, or if you're interested in highly sophisticated AI characterization, or if you're simply fascinated by octopuses and cephalopods like I am, then this is a book you're definitely going to enjoy. I'm giving The Mountain in the Sea a score of four stars. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more sci-fi content.